of random scraps of papers, a whole bunch of stickers just lying around, and notes and coupons that you just can't seem to get organized? Well, I got the solution for you. It is the envelope notebook. Something like this could cost a kajillion dollars over the internet. But I will teach you how to make one right now. So, let's get started. Oh my gosh, it's amazing! Materials needed for this project are envelopes, cardstock, a cereal box, ruler, glue, a hole punch, some kind of spiral binding, elastic, a pencil, and I used the foil quill to add some decoration to my cover, but this is completely optional. You will also need scissors, not shown. The first thing you want to do is measure the length and the width of your envelope. You want to add an eighth of an inch to, your, to the length of your envelope and a fourth of an inch to the width of your envelope. This will give you a one eighth of an inch overhang on your book. After that, you want to use the measurements you got from your envelope to cut out two rectangles out of the cereal box. These will be our covers. Once we have the cardboard cut out, we are going to paste it onto our cardstock, leaving about a 1 inch overhang around the entire piece of cardboard. Then what you want to do is cut the corners off. This will create tabs that we will then fold over and glue to the back of our piece of cardboard. Once you have that done, it may warp a little. To prevent this, you will put the cover and the back underneath some heavy books to help ensure that it dries flat. While you're waiting for the glue on your cover to dry, you are going to measure out where the holes are going to be on your envelopes. I did this by measuring the diameter of my spiral binding and cutting it in half. This will give me the positioning of where my holes are going to be. I also put the spiral binding up next to my envelope to make sure I got the spacing of the holes correct. Once the glue on the covers are dry, you can start decorating them. I tried to do the whole cover as kind of like a shimmery text thing, but it didn't end up looking good, so I did what anybody would do and just cover it up with paper. It works so much better. I think it actually turned out a lot better than what I had planned in my head, so I was really happy with it. But you can decorate your cover however you like. After you decorate your covers, you can start cutting out all of the holes that you need for your binding to go through. On the envelope flap where you punch the holes, you also want to cut a little slit. This will allow the envelope to open and close freely when your book is put together. I also put tape over these parts so these little tabs will not tear as easily. Once you're done cutting out all of the holes for your book, you now have confetti! Feel free to throw it at all of your friends! Next what we want to do is cut the slits for our elastic to go through. This is an optional step, you do not have to have the elastic on your book. I just thought it was a nice thing to keep my book closed when I have a lot of things inside the envelope book. What I did is cut two slits a little bigger than the width of my elastic. You want it a little bigger than the width of your elastic so your elastic can pull through easily. Then you pull in one end of your elastic to one of your slits. You put all of the pages together and you wrap the elastic around the pages and that will give you the length you need for your elastic. Then you take all the pages out and put the other end of the elastic and pull it through. I used hot glue to glue these parts down because I knew I was going to be pulling on them more. 
Once you have the elastic inserted into the back of the book, you can take two pieces of cardstock and place them over where the cardboard is showing on your cover and your back. This will create a cleaner, nicer look. Now that we have all of our pieces all ready and set to go, we can start putting our book together onto our spiral binding. We want to put the cover on first, and then all our envelope pages, and then the cover. Then I just bent the spiral binding back with my fingers, and voila, you have your very own envelope book. This isn't an original idea. I saw something similar to this on Instagram, and then I looked it up on YouTube to see if there were any other videos, and there's a surprising amount of tutorials for envelope books. So this is mine, my design for the envelope book. I hope you guys like it. Well, I hope you liked the video. I did do it a little bit differently than my other videos, so I hope you guys like it. If you do end up making this book, please, you know, comment down below if you do, or tag me over on Instagram a picture of your finished creation, because I would like to see if anybody does follow this tutorial, and it doesn't just get lost among the many other tutorial videos. So yeah, so if you'd like to see more tutorials like this one, please like and subscribe, and tick that bell icon so you get, do get notified when I post a video next. Bye everybody! Bye everybody! I just made a huge mess everywhere. I'll clean it up, it's fine.